Okay, this is an example problem of calculating the viscous shear stress in a fluid using Newton's law of viscosity. This is an exam caliber question taken from a recent midterm exam. So what we have is a classical setup that you often see in physics problems. Uh, you have a block sliding down an inclined plane and the problem states a block with a mass of 50 grams slides down an inclined plane at an angle of 20 degrees here. The lower surface of the block, which has dimensions of five and a half by 10 and a half centimeters is lubricated by a thin layer of oil with a dynamic viscosity of 0.874 pascal seconds. And it has constant thickness of 0.12 millimeters. You're told in the problem that the drag of the air on the block is negligible compared to the viscous shear force of the oil. Assuming a linear velocity profile in the oil layer, you're asked to calculate the steady state speed V of the block. Of course, the first thing to do when you have a problem involving force balances is to draw a free body diagram. As a side comment, I always give significant part marks for a reasonable free body diagram because it's such an important part of the solution procedure. So you want to draw the block completely isolated in space. Don't draw the inclined plane. So the block only and you put all the forces on it. Here I've shown the weight of the block acting vertically, mg, and I've indicated the slope of the plane, theta. There'll also be a force normal to the block. And there's a viscous shear force of the oil on the lower surface of the block, tau A. Remember that tau is a shear stress, so you need to multiply it by the appropriate area to get a force. In this case, the area A is the area of the bottom of the block in contact with the oil. Notice that the viscous shear force on the block acts to oppose motion. It acts to slow down the block, so the more viscous the oil is, the slower the block is going to slide. You're told in the problem statement that you're looking for the steady state speed of the block, so the block is sliding at constant speed, it's not accelerating, so F equals MA equals zero because the acceleration is zero. Of course, we're interested in motion parallel to the plane, so here I've defined that direction as x, which is the direction of motion. And the direction perpendicular to the plane is y. So in this problem, we have to set the sum of the forces in the x direction to zero. There are only two forces in the x direction. One is the x component of weight. And over here, I've shown the weight vector mg, and I've resolved it into the component normal to the plane, mg cos theta, and the component that drives the motion of the block, the component in the x direction, which is mg sine theta. As I said, it's the component of the weight parallel to the plane mg sine theta that's causing the block to slide and the shear force tau a that's opposing motion. So our sum of the forces equals zero in the x direction is just mg sine theta and then minus tau a equals zero. And we just get that the x component of the weight balances the shear force on the block. So here I've just rewritten that force balance from the previous slide. I'll call that equation one. The key to solving this problem is to realize that the viscous shear stress is related to the sliding speed of the block, V, which is what we're trying to calculate. Newton's law of viscosity relates the shear stress tau to the velocity gradient, du dy. And du dy is the velocity gradient in the thin oil layer. Here I've drawn a sketch of the velocity distribution in the oil beneath the block. Recall that the oil sticks to both the block and the plane. That's because we have a no-slip condition at both surfaces. So the oil is stationary at the surface of the inclined plane. And similarly, the oil has the same speed as the block at the surface of the block. You're told in the problem statement to assume a linear velocity profile. We'll actually prove this later in the course in chapter four. So you have a velocity going from zero to a velocity V in the X direction over a distance delta T. So for a linear velocity profile, it's very easy to calculate the velocity gradient. DU, DY is just going from V at the surface of the block to zero 
at the surface of the plane over a distance delta t. So our velocity gradient is just v over delta t. We can make the substitution over here for du dy. We'll call that equation 2. So tau equals mu v over delta t. Now we can substitute equation 2 into equation 1. And we get mg sine theta equals the dynamic viscosity v over delta t times a. Now we can solve for the unknown velocity v. So v equals mg sine theta over the thickness of the oil layer divided by the dynamic viscosity of the oil and the surface area. That's the surface area of the block in contact with the oil. I've simply rewritten this final equation, and I've also added over here a couple of other parameters from the problem statement as a reminder. You're told that the block has a mass of 50 grams, so 0.05 kilograms, and you're given the dynamic viscosity of the oil is 0.874 pascal seconds. So we can start making the substitutions. So mass is 0.05 kilograms, g is 9.8 meters per second squared. The angle of the inclined plane is 20 degrees. That's the thickness of the oil layer, 0.12 millimeters, so 0.00012 meters. Here we have the dynamic viscosity of the oil, 0.874 pascal seconds, and then the surface area of the bottom of the block. The block surface area is 5.5 centimeters by 10.5 centimeters, so 0.105 meters times 0.0 five five meters. Now it's always worth taking a moment just to check the units, make sure that they balance so you didn't drop a term. So to do this, notice from F equals MA, a kilogram meter per second squared is a Newton. So this Newton will then cancel with this Newton and meter squared here cancels with meter squared and you're left with meter per second, which is correct. And so you end up with an answer of 3.99 times 10 to the minus 3 meters per second, or about 4 millimeters a second. And that's the answer. And that completes this presentation.